Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today our goal is to, let's see, you see that button up there, run our flow? Oh, let me, I need to, let me make me bigger, hold on. You see that button up there, run our flow? I want to create that with SharePoint Framework, and to do that, I'm going to use a list extension. So let's get into it, and let's create a custom button to run our flow. So today I want to trigger a flow two different ways. First, we're gonna do it just in simple SharePoint. We're gonna create a button and we'll trigger a flow. So let's go ahead, let's go to my flows. And we're gonna do a new flow. So new automated flow. And from, I'm just gonna say from button click. And it's none of these triggers. If I search for HTTP, it's not easy to find. I'm going to do skip here. And we're going to do from an HTTP request is received. When an HTTP request is received. And out of the box, it says any user in my tenant. In order to do this, we need to go to Azure and we need to configure, you know, OAuth. We, we need to do a good bit of work. So for this video, I'm just going to do anyone. That doesn't mean this is the way you should do it. This is a security issue. But for right now, for this video, I just want to show how you can trigger things from a button click. And we're just going to say anyone and then show all. For now, I'm going to change it to get. So who can trigger this? Anyone. And then we're going to generate a URL after we write a we update or no, create an item. We create an item in SharePoint. So we're just gonna create a simple item in my SharePoint list, which is called testing SPFX. And we're gonna do it in my new list sandbox. And we're gonna say, the title is written by Power Automate. And the status value will be completed. And then we'll hit save. And this is going to generate a URL for us. So the URL that is generated is here. And so I'll probably blur out some of this, this URL. But this is the URL that we have. And we're just going to test this out. So in my SharePoint list, I'm going to edit and I'm going to create a button. So I'm just going to add a simple button in here. And this button is going to have our link in here. And we're going to test power automate. And I'm going to republish. And here's my list, just a simple list. If I refresh right now, we have task A, B, and C, and some statuses in here. And when I press this button, it shows a blank page, which is what we want. That means everything worked. There was no errors. Everything looks good. So we can go back to the list and press refresh. And we have written this from a Power Automate button. But I don't want that to just work from that button click. I want to create a custom button just like this one. I call it Command over 9000. We're going to create this button in SharePoint Framework. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my method down here to post instead of get because we're gonna post here, we're not going to get anymore. And so our button is going to cease to exist on our SharePoint home site. So now if I click the button, it says, hey, if we zoom in here, I was expecting a get, but you did a post, but we're gonna do this in SharePoint framework. What I'm going to do is I'm going to CD CEO. I'm going to create a new folder. So to do that, I'm gonna do MD, and we'll call this uh, list button. How about that list button? I'm going to do CD list button to navigate to that list. And then I'm going to say yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint. And this is going to start creating our SharePoint framework solution. We'll keep the name list button. I'm fine with that. This time, it is a extension and we are going to do a list view command set. So it's going to be in a list, right? So 
a list view command set and it's going to be list button and it's going to create that package for us and it's going to create all that out of the box code it's going to be nice and beautiful for us so we're just waiting for that to complete and then we're going to open this up in visual studio code now if you don't know any of these steps there's plenty of tutorials online uh, we did a video last week on setting up SharePoint framework and starting off with a new project. So this is like our second, we're more of an intermediate now. We know how SharePoint framework works and we know what version we're on and now we have a nice package. And what we're going to do is we're going to run code dot to open up Visual Studio Code. And I'll just have some coffee while we wait. If you don't want to wait with me, you can go ahead and skip forward. I always add chapters to the videos for you guys. Sometimes the videos can be very long and editing them. Some people don't like it. Some people do. I think the best solution to find middle ground is to add chapters. All right. So our code was created. Now I'm going to write code dot in PowerShell. And this is going to open up Visual Studio Code for me. And in here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to config serve.json and I'm going to change my page URLs on both the serve configuration and the list button configuration. So my list here is list sandbox. That's where I'm going to change this here. And I'm going to change this here. I'm going to click file save. I'm then going to go to terminal, new terminal, and I'm just going to check out the out of the box code, right? I just want to make sure everything's running out of the box. Everything's running nice and beautiful. Let's just kind of do a gulp serve and just see if we run into any errors. So the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to open up for me in Microsoft Edge. It's going to open up the out of the box, pretty much the code that's running here in my source file and if we look in here this is my list button command and you can see that there is a command one and a dialog alert and a command two and a dialog alert it's logging some information here on a state changed and and if we really look at the oh there it goes it started loading load debug scripts i, I did get an initial error um this error right now does not really cause me problems. I do realize that it's the manifest JS. So I did receive an error. So to get past this, I'm going to say uh, trust assert. It's kind of like my local server is not really trusting what's appearing. So I'm going to say gulp trust dev cert. So in my development environment, I'm just kind of saying, hey, just kind of, you know, trust this in my local development. We'll just kind of do that again. Trust it. And then do gulp serve. Make sure, hopefully I saved everything. Load debug scripts. Uh, no error this time. So this time we're looking better. And I'm just going to close down some of my tabs. I feel like I had a lot of tabs in there. Let me move me over too. Okay, so we have my list here. You can see now command two. You see this up here? Command two. And watch what happens if I click on one. And it goes to command one. So we have two different options for buttons in SharePoint. We can do command two, command one. I really only want command two because I, I, I don't, I'm not going to do for selected item today. Maybe that's something you want to do, but I'm trying to keep this super simple. So in my manifest, so I really only want to see one button. So I'm actually going to get rid of command two. I'm going to clean up some of this code. I'm going to get rid of some of these comments. I feel like they're distracting for me right now. Um, you can read those comments if you want. So requires custom scripts. There's a PowerShell that you can run to require custom scripts on sites. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I only have command one. And then in here, in my .ts, my TypeScript file, I'm going to, I'm gonna clean this out. Like there's a lot, there's too much in here. So I'm gonna remove this string. I'm going to clean out a lot of these comments. I want to make this very basic, very simple. And we can see this is the, the logging on initialized. On initialized, it shows the command. Is it visible? Command one. Yes, on initialized, make it visible. 
Okay, the promise resolved on execute. I'm gonna remove these alerts. Uh, let's see, I don't want an alert. Let's just have a break right there. And if there's an error, throw an unknown command. I'm gonna get rid of some of these comments for right now. Take out this whole private on list view state change. I'll probably rename this uh, method something else. So I'll take that out. I'm gonna take out this line. I'm just trying to you know, start a very basic dialogue. No dialogue yet. And I'm gonna take out state changed. There we go. So we're left with uh, almost like, I, I took out a lot of that work in there. Let's go ahead and click save all. And let's take a look at it in SharePoint. Let's make sure that it, it kind of works. Do we see command one up here? We do. Um, when I click on it, nothing is happening. That's probably because we removed that state changed. Um, how about when I click on it, let's uh, console.log. Hey, you clicked command one. So let's go ahead and save. So now let me open up developer tools. I'm going to do uh, F12 to open up developer tools. And we'll give it a refresh. Just make sure everything's nice and clean in here. Has my time. Now when I click my button here, command one. Hey, you clicked command one. You see that? So we're now console logging that. I like that we can see that that says, hey, the button's working. Okay, the button's working. Now what I want to do is instead of console, well, we'll leave console.log in there. But what I want to do is I want to run another method. So I'm going to say this dot trigger flow. How about that trigger flow? Maybe start flow, start flow, start flow. And we're going to run another method. And that's all it's going to do. And we're going to create a private method here. Private method. Oh, sorry. No, not private method. Private start flow and it's going to void okay so we have a um, um, flow in here we could probably even pull this console.log into here so now when we click save all we'll see when i on case command one we're going to run our method start flow so it's going to run this so it should once again if i pull up the developer tools and I click on command one. Hey, you, it's still saying, hey, you clicked command one. So that's working. My method is working. In my method, I want to do something else. I want to call that flow. And I'm going to keep this super simple right now. We're going to hard code the URL in there. So constant flow URL. We well, have to be very careful with case sensitive. Let's, let's do all caps here. Um, URL equals, and let's grab that URL. We probably generated a new URL, so let's just make sure we give it a save. Probably when I change the method to post, the URL may might have changed. I'm not sure about that, but let's just give it a save, give it a refresh, and come back in here. And then check out that URL. I'm gonna copy this URL going to go to my code and I'm going to hard code it in here. For this time, I'm going to hard code it in here just because I want to keep this super simple for you guys. There's other ways we could do this. That's fine. And let's say now let's fetch. Um, we're going to fetch the flow, the flow URL. And to do this next, we need um, a record. So we're going to do some squiggly brackets in there. And this is where we do an HTTP request. So pretty simple. I feel like if you've been doing HTTP requests in Power Automate, you should know how to do this now in code. And notice I'm doing a method of post, a method of post. And the headers are going to be very similar to what you've seen before. Content type uh, JSON, application JSON. And let's see here. And then we also need a body, just in case we do have a body and it's going to stringify. And we're gonna put a blank body in here right now. Let's see if I get that all right. Oop, get all that right. Let's see, what's wrong with headers? What's wrong with headers? Oh, oh, it, it, this should be in uh, squiggly brackets. So we should have 
a, a record there. That's actually a record. So that fixed our headers. Everything else is looking pretty good. Uh, so simple, right? We're making this as simple as we can. File, save all. And so, hey, you clicked the command one. That's all fine. I don't think this would work in my dev environment, uh, my like on local. Uh, I guess we'll give it a try. Um, we can see we have command one here. I don't think that should work, but maybe it will. Maybe it will work. So let's give it a refresh. It did. So in my dev environment, I did write straight to my uh, list. So let's click it again. Or let's um, just kind of look at the dev tools. Okay, my dev tools are up. I click the button. Hey, you clicked command one. I, I feel like I should just hit refresh. I'm going to hit F5. We have a third line. So there we go. That's as simple as we can make it. Now we could probably go back in here. There's some things we could do, right? We could add that dialogue back. Remember the dialogue? What we'll say next is I'll, I'll come over here and I'll, I'll uncomment my dialogue. And then we'll, after the body, we'll write a dialogue dot alert, something simple, um, power automate, should have triggered. Now we're not really doing any like error handling or any of that yet. That's 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 a whole nother video that we can really go into error handling for our code. Let's just keep it simple like this. And I'll do another gulp serve. We can see we have command one. Maybe I'll change the power automate just to kind of kind of, you know, update it so we get something different. Give it a second. So create item list are written by power automate. So new line written and I give it a save power, power automate is going kind of slow for me today. All right. So we did that. Now let's go back to SharePoint. Give this a refresh. We can see our command one commands. One is still up there. Power Automate should have triggered. Kind of wait on it, give it a refresh. There it is, new line written. So all that is working. We now have our dialog box. All that's working. This is the very basic, basic out of the box of allowing a button to trigger a Power Automate from SharePoint Framework. I guess what's next is just give our button a new name. Maybe we'll call it, um, run our flow we'll just keep it simple run our flow get an image icon so store an icon in your site assets of your site so if we come in here to site contents site assets we're still in classic experience uh, site assets i have a logo in here to grab it i normally just go to version history and i will copy this link right here that's the url of my icon I'm going to go back to my code and paste in my icon. I'm going to click File, Save. And then we'll check out our list again. So right up here, if we give it a refresh, we then see Run Our Flow. Now it should have triggered, runs again. Give it a refresh. We now have two lines written. So the next steps now is to just upload this to your environment. So that's when you package your solution, put it in your app store and upload to your environment. Hopefully this is helpful. This is as basic and as simple as I can make it. It's pretty simple. It's only a few lines of code. It's, it's very, very simple. A few lines of code. We're just initializing a few things, logging a few things. Then we're running on execute and we're running a new function and that function right here is just an HTTP call to Power Automate. If you want to see more, leave a comment and we'll see how this video does. Uh, SharePoint framework is hard to demo. There's lots of little things that you need to learn in order for this all to work. I will upload this to GitHub. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Hopefully that will help. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess and I'll see you next week.